Hello there and welcome to A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at volumes of revolution where we're working with parametrically defined curves. So we can answer questions from exercise 4c. So let's see how we're going to do the volumes of revolution with parametric equations. So you can adjust the formula for volume of revolution so it can be used for equations given parametrically such as x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t. Remember, parametric curves are where you have two equations in terms of a third variable. It might be theta, it might be t, but it's x equals something and y equals something to define the x and the y coordinates in terms of a third variable. So let's have a look at the formula that we had previously. This would be the volume revolution over the x-axis, and it'd be the integral of pi so pi times the integral from x equals a to x equals b, the limits are x limits in this case, of y squared. And what you would do is then substitute your equation in where y is and then dx. And you would do your integration with respect to the x function with respect to x. So let's see how we can change this and bring in the letter t. So this here is what is equivalent. So let's compare what we've got here. Well, first thing I notice is that in the limits, they are t limits, or the limit in terms of the third variable. So it's not x equals or y equals, it's t equals, or it might be something like theta equals as well. y squared is still involved. That's the main function you're going to be differentiating. So take your y function in terms of it's the g of t function here, square it, and that's what you're going to be integrating. But also this extra dx by dt. So what you have to do is you have to take this one and pop it in, so having squared it. But you have to also take this one and differentiate it first, because it's dx by dt. And then that will be an extra multiplier onto your y squared. And then you integrate it with respect to dt. You can see what would happen here. If you cancelled out the dt's here, you've basically got exactly the same formula as you did above. So that's why we need the extra dx by dt in there. So don't forget there are x limits on the original one and you need to change those to t limits instead. OK, let's have a go at our first question then. So we have the curve C shown on the right has parametric equations x equals t brackets 1 plus t and y equals 1 over 1 plus t, where t is greater than 0. And we have our limits in between 0 to 2 on the x-axis. So it's x equals 0 to x equals 2. Let's read the question. The region R is bounded by the curve, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. Find the exact volume of the solid form when R is rotated 2 pi radians about the y-axis. So what we need for this is to use the formula. Incidentally, if we wanted to revolve around the y-axis, it would be exactly the same stuff. You'd have x squared and then dy by dt, just like we have uh, in the formula up here. So it works on both the axes to revolve them, so to um, rotate them around the axes and find the volume. Uh, it's not just the x-axis. OK, let's get started then. So the first thing we need to do is to find the new limits because we've got x equals 0 to x equals 2, but that's not what we're going to put into our formula. It's the t limits. So what we're going to do then is we'll take the x equation, which is x equals t brackets 1 plus t, and find what t needs to equal so that x is 0. And let's find, work that out. So it's either 0 or minus 1. But given that t is greater than 0, it will have to be 0. And what happens when x equals 2 as well? When it's equal to 2, we get a little quadratic, and we get t equals minus 2 or 1. And given that t is greater or equal to 0 again, we will delete the minus 2 solution. So we have our t limits here. We have 0 and 1. The next thing we need to do, we know what y is, that'll be the easy part, that's just 1 over t. So 1 over 1 plus t, we need to find dx by dt as well. So take your x equation and differentiate it, maybe you want to expand the brackets before doing that differentiation. So 1 plus 2t will be something extra that we need to have inside our integral. Okay, so we're going to use the limits between t uh, from t equals 0 to t equals 1, and we know that dx by dt is 1 plus 2t. Let's now go ahead and do the full big integral. Let's substitute everything in. 
So we have the pi times the integral from 1 to 0. We have the y function that's being squared. You can see the y function is over here. This is being squared over here. So you can see those boundaries. You can see the y function has been squared. And you can also see that we, ha we have extra in there. It's the dx by dt function. Okay, so now what we need to do is now we need to start looking for how we're going to integrate this. Let's put everything together, and what we can tell here, how would we, how would we integrate this? We'd integrate it by using partial fractions. So now we're going to need some partial fractions work. So multiply all up by 1 plus t squared. Substitute in some strategic values for t, and we can work out that b is minus 1 and a is 2. So we've split these up into partial fractions, and now we'll integrate them by partial fractions. So let's carry on using our integration, and we'll integrate them by partial fractions. The first one will be a LUN integral, the second one will be a integration by substitution one, or maybe you might be able to do it a bit quicker than that. The answer to it is 1 over 1 plus t. Okay, so this is our integral. Hopefully you know how to integrate these kind of things already. If not, then have a look back in some previous videos that would definitely help you do that. Okay, so when we substitute in the limits then, we put 1 in first and then subtract 0 being put in. And then when we work out all of this, looks like it would be something quite complicated. Simplifies and simplifies again. So we've got pi times 2 ln 2 minus a half. And there we are. That's the volume for this revolution. Right then, so it's your turn to have a go at this question here then. So it's page 84, exercise 4C, question 4. Just want to highlight to you that you're rotating through 2 pi radians about the y-axis. In the previous example, what we've done is rotate about the x-axis. So go back and have a look at what you need to do for rotating around the y-axis and the formula you need for that. Okay, so let's go through this question then. So question four is the curve C has parametric equations x equals tan theta, y equals sec cubed theta, zero between, so theta between zero to pi by two. The region R is defined by the curve the y-axis, the lines y equals one, y equals eight, and is rotated through two pi radians about the y-axis. So it's going to go in that way round the y-axis. Find the volume of the solid formed uh, of the revolution. So, first thing we need to do then is work out our new limits because we've got y equals 1 to y equals 8, which is not a theta limit. We need a theta limit. So, we know that um, y is equal to 1, and we know that y is equal to sec cubed. So, that will imply that sec cubed theta equals 1. Cube rooting both sides, we'll get sec theta equals 1 still. So therefore, cos theta will equal 1. And when does cos theta equal 1? When theta equals 0. Moving on to the next one, when y equals 8, well, that will imply that sec cubed will be 8. When we cube root both sides, that will give us sec theta equals 2. And that will mean that cos theta equals half. Uh, now that will happen at uh, 60 degrees, so that will be pi by 3 in radians. So there we are, our limits are 0 to pi by 3. Now what formula are we going to use for revolving around the y-axis? Well it's going to be the pi times the integral between pi by 3 down to 0 of x squared dy by dt dt. You can see how the letters here are changed from the question that we worked on last. That's because we're revolving around the y-axis and not the x-axis. So make sure you know which formula to use depending upon which axis you're revolving around. So the next thing we'll do is we'll then start substituting in some of these values. So when it says x squared, that means take this x equation here and square it. So that's going to be tan squared. dy by dt, okay, we need to differentiate sec cubed, so that's going to be 3 sec theta tan theta times sec squared. 
So that's just using the chain rule there. So we could simplify that to 3 sec cubed theta tan theta. Uh, that would be with respect to d theta. So we've not used t, we've used theta in this question. Okay, the next thing to do then will be to simplify what we've got and then have a look at how we're going to integrate this. So it would be if you move the 3 to the front, tan cubed theta sec cubed theta d theta cubed theta. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is... Uh, you might have tried all sorts of different things when you got to this point here. What we're going to try here is we're going to rewrite tan squared. So we're going to take two of these tans here and rewrite it as sec squared minus 1. That's an equivalent expression for tan squared. Let's now simplify what we got after this. And that's going to give us uh, tan theta... Let's expand the brackets, sec 5 theta minus tan theta sec cubed theta d theta. Okay, let's move on to the next page and work this out uh, m more carefully. Okay, so what I've got at the moment is this expression here, and then with both of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat them as tan theta sec theta and then sec to the 4 theta. So I pulled out one of these sec thetas and just moved it uh, to the left a little bit and then the next one do something similar tan theta sec theta times sec squared theta. Now why did I do this? The reason is I'm trying to follow the um, inverse chain rule of integration. So if I'm trying to integrate something that looks like um, some function of x to the power of n multiplied by the differential of f of x, then the answer to this is 1 over n plus 1 f of x to the power of n plus 1 reason being is that when you differentiate this, you you um, differentiate the outside of the function first by bringing the power to the front, and then you differentiate and then reduce the power by 1, and then you differentiate the inside of the function, and that's where the f dash of x comes in. So if you notice that tan and tan theta sec theta is the differential of sec theta, so this is what we can do here. In both of these questions, this bit here is the f dash of x part, and this is the function to the power of n. So in this case, it's going to be 3 pi, and then it's going to be 1 over 5 sec to the power of 5 theta, and then the second part is going to be 1 over 3 sec to the power of 3 theta. And that's going to be in between the boundaries of pi by 3 to 0. Okay, so we now need to put the... Um, numbers in, so it's going to be 3 pi at the front, and then putting pi by 3 into this, I'm going to get 32 over 5. Putting pi by 3 into the second part here, I'm going to get 8 over 3. And then minus 0 going in, that will give us a 1, so it will be 1 over 5 minus 1 over 3. And then when you simplify all of this, you get 50 8 pi divided by 5. Uh, and there we are. That's the answer to this question here. So there we are. Make sure you have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 4C on page 84. Make sure you have a go at those problem-solving questions, the exam-style questions, to make sure you're fully prepared if one of these questions comes up. And make sure you know the difference between revolving around the y-axis and revolving around the x-axis when you do it parametrically, the difference between those two formulas. And make a really strong note of it. Lovely. Thanks very much for watching.